Imagine, let's go back four and a half to 5,000 years into the Neolithic period, the new Stone Age where it grazed the boundaries of the Bronze Age. Populations would have been tiny by modern standards, but even back then, Britain was a buzzing network of thriving communities. We know from modern technology we've found that some of the animal remains found in the south originally came from Orkney, and that axe heads from Cumbria have been found as far afield as northern Europe. We know there was a trade route that ran all the way from the far Scottish Isles right the way down to the south coast of Britain. And that shared culture ran through some of the most impressive sites ever to be constructed across the British Isles. The Ring of Brogdor on Orkney is the third largest stone circle in Britain. And on south to the vast sites like Knowlton Henge in Dorset. And yet, here, Oxfordshire's best kept secret. And a site of immense importance for so many different reasons. This is the Devil's Quoits at Stanton Harcourt. So why is this place so important? Well, most significantly, it was virtually destroyed over millennia. It was ploughed flat by medieval times. It was even the site of an Air Force runway during World War II and half destroyed by gravel quarrying. So everything you see now is the result of the most breathtaking research by archeologists to analyze every conceivable aspect and piece it back together again to its former glory. Well, within reason, the bank would have been twice that height and the ditch would have been twice that depth, although they've left that here for good reason. What you're seeing here, this is actually how it would have appeared during the Roman period, but the archeologists have left it here because that way all the Bronze Age remains are completely protected beneath this layer and they can come back and excavate those at a future date. Intriguingly, a cluster of post holes were found here, right in the centre of the circle, which could well be the remains of a timber structure. But before we go rushing to call it the centre of religious activities, we should probably bear in mind that every open construction site needs a central space for supplies and protection. So this could just as easily have been where all the workmen ran to when it started to pour with rain. The thing is, no other site has been so meticulously researched and restored, giving us the clearest glimpse into how these sites would have appeared all those thousands of years ago. And whatever activities were going on inside, whether it was markets or circuses or rituals or religious ceremonies, this place was designed to impress There is no doubt that the community here was large. Apart from any other remains, the surrounding landscape holds more than 70 ring ditches, the remains of mounds and burials, 
Now that is more than double the number to be found in the landscape surrounding Stonehenge, which is only about 50 miles to the south of here. But perhaps more informative is that a lot of animal bones were excavated here, 90% of which were cattle, and some of those were particularly large and may have been aurochs. Also interesting, the ditch, it seems, was never intended to be kept tidy. Some of the time it was completely overgrown at the base and the walls were stabilised by thick vegetation. And to be honest, this site has really forced me to question a lot of things that I thought I knew. I had always believed, and I still do, that these vast sites were public. That first impression, when you climb the bank and you see that central space for the first time, it's one of grandeur. And yet the archaeology here just leaves us a void. The lack of pottery, for example. Does that mean it was never here? And maybe this was just a farm. You know, what better way to protect your animals than to surround them by a ditch? Or maybe they, the remains were here, but they were always cleared away after every party. And in actual fact, not far from here, there's a massive Bronze Age rubbish tip waiting to be found. Then again, maybe these sites really were places of religion and ceremony. We can't avoid that possibility, but if this place really was a temple, then why are there so many cattle bones? Don't know. Anyone would be forgiven for being absolutely horrified to see a site as magnificent as this, surrounded by industrial warehouses and workings. But then again, a monument as imposing as this has probably always been lying right at the heart, not just of people's busy lives, but the centre of commerce and industry of an entire forgotten culture. In all probability, the only thing that's really changed is the scale. Hi, Michael Bott here. Thank you for watching this video. I do hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please consider becoming one of our valued Patreon supporters. Just click on the link above, have a look, see if there's a level at which you'd like to support our production of the Standing With Stones podcast, interviews, films like this, and much more. There are lots of perks and rewards to choose from, and for as little as a dollar a month, you can become one of the Standing With Stones team. You might even get a free Standing With Stones baseball cap. <laughs> Thanks again for watching. See you again soon, I hope.